talking about Children of the Corn Runaway, which is actually, I believe, the ninth instalment of this franchise, which was originally based on a short story by Stephen King, of course. The, the original movie is somewhat of a, a classic, and this is obviously beloved, and now we have a bunch of sequels that have been going on ever since the original. And I'll be honest, I haven't seen all of these movies. I've seen the first few. Um, the later ones, I, I just haven't seen. But I'll, this one sort of came out, and... Um, this is kind of a modern one. I thought I'd revisit it and see what it's kind of like. Because it did have some scary elements, the original movie. Uh, so how does it compare now? So this film basically, it helps if you have seen at least some of the original movies. But I feel it does a good job of making new viewers um, able to understand what's going on. So it ultimately follows this character called Ruth, who... Uh, used to be one of the children of the corn and has kind of got away and she's now an adult of course and she's basically on the run with her young son now i would compare this film to a kind of a terminator 2 t2 style movie and the fact that you have this mother you know on the run but kind of protecting her young son from kind of some uh, kind of otherworldly force um and, and obviously kind of like protecting him and kind of doing what's necessary to kind of keep him safe. So it definitely, to me, has a Terminator 2 vibe. And I've got a feeling the filmmakers know this, because they do say the words, hasta la vista, baby, in it, or hasta la vista, at least. So I do feel there's definitely, that it's a knowing kind of like homage to that film. Um, so ultimately, it follows this character, Ruth, who kind of ends up in this kind of small town. Uh, and uh, we, we start to see maybe children acting a little weird, but she definitely has some kind of mental problems. So we don't know for sure whether it's, you know, really these kind of, ch these children have kind of followed her here, or they're kind of affecting people outside the kind of the, um, the original area, or if it, she's just kind of losing it, and it's all kind of in her head. And that kind of level of uncertainty is actually quite a, quite a positive in the film, because you never really know if what you're seeing is real or not. So what do we think of Children of the Corn Runaway? I've got to say it's kind of nice to maybe um, come away from the cornfields a little bit and have a kind of a bit more of a original style plot with this film and a kind of this, uh, this kind of woman on a run. And I've got to say the thing that stood out for me the most here, well, I think the acting is pretty damn decent. And on for the entire cast here, uh, Marty Miller, who plays uh, Ruth, and she has another name that will be revealed through the film, uh, does a really good job of making this this female character seem both a kind of someone you sympathise with, but also someone who's very tough. So I thought that was very good. She, she seems bedraggled as well, attractive but bedraggled. She's kind of looked like she has had, you know, a hard life, and that's obviously down to costume and makeup and everything as well. But also the supporting cast as well. I thought the, the the son does quite a good job of, you know, not being a typical kind of douchey kid. He does seem quite kind of devoted to his mother. Uh, but at the same time, he's got his own things going on, and we have uh, some of the kind of the other sort of the co-stars, so people that she meets in this particular town, all seem like a kind of a bunch of uh, fun characters. Um, so that the acting was pretty decent, and uh, there are a few kind of like gore shots here, a few death scenes, probably more than I was expecting actually, and uh, you know uh, there are some quite interesting ones. You know, you don't quite know, you know, who's going to bite it. it. Seems to be whoever. Whoever maybe is connected with Ruth somehow ends up kind of like uh, potentially maybe uh, biting the bullet, so to speak. Uh, and she has a various kind of run-ins of different sort of characters as we kind of go through the movie. Um, so that was a pretty, pretty good. But it's never mega overboard with the kind of the gore and the kind of the special effects and stuff as well. Um, is there any negative to this film? I've got to say, I think they went a little bit too over the board with the kind of the flashbacks and the dream sequences. Uh, Ruth as a character has all these kind of like visions and kind of uh, and, and uh, dreams to it. It's clearly to make the audience know this woman has some mental issues. And that we get it, we get it. We don't need to see a kind of a weird flashback every kind of five minutes. And it's quite, I mean, it's, it's partly designed to make it disorientated because you don't know if, if you're watching the current scene or something in flashback. But I've got to say, it became a little annoying at times and. Um, I think it's a trip they have overused a little bit too much here, and you kind of want the, the story to progress. Think, okay, I get it. She is suffering with these kind of weird visions. I get it. Let's kind of move on and kind of you know, get going on the plot here. When we get to the third act, obviously I'm not going to tell you what happens here, but I feel the third act is a little bit messy, 
and uh, you know you, there's certain kind of things that seem a little bit too coincidental uh, there's a bit of a reveal but I've got to say I kind of gathered what was going to happen uh, sort of early on in the film so I don't feel it's a big surprise when we kind of find out the kind of the twist about what's happening here obviously I'm not going to give it away but I feel if you're kind of a smart you'll kind of get where it's going ultimately uh, but overall I've got to say this was a quite an enjoyable uh, movie in regards to a horror film and I do feel you could watch this maybe without seeing the the original films but obviously it will help um, obviously having that kind of um, that reference point but it, you can watch it as a as a standard it feels like more like a spin-off rather than a sequel uh, so overall despite the fact that I feel it, it, it is does have some issues maybe some story issues here um, it's still an enjoyable watch so I'll give it an above average six out of ten uh, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.